centipede. What's up YouTube official gaming network and welcome to episode 9 of our Jetpack Joyride game in Java tutorial. Last episode uh, we drew some pixels onto the screen. This episode we're going to be creating uh, super classes and uh, you know first of all I'm going to make a vlog about why I haven't been uploading videos which is like a probably something you're thinking about right now and uh, you know I want your guys uh, feedback on the uh, you know face cam tutorial things are uh, it was a suggestion from my, uh, like, dad, because, uh, my dad and my mum, like, I told him about my YouTube channel, and, uh, he suggested, uh, put a face cam uh, on your tutorial, so, yeah, I, I just want your guys' feedback, like, uh, do you want me to keep it, do you not want me to keep it, uh, leave your suggestion in the comments below, and, uh, I made a vlog, uh, like, a week ago, about, uh, Oh yeah, it was about us celebrating 200 subscribers, and to celebrate that, uh, I wanted to make a Q&A, so, uh, yeah, just, uh, ask me a question in the comment section below, and, uh, I'll include it in my Q&A when I, like, uh, you know, have enough, uh, questions. So, uh, yeah, uh, we're gonna be, uh, making two super classes, uh, in our game today. Uh, I already discussed what a super class is, like, uh, you know, a few episodes ago, so I'm not going to explain it again. We're just going to dive right into it. So we're going to create two packages. One uh, will be called com.ogn.jetpack.entity. And uh, we're going to create a new class in that package, and we're going to call it entity. And uh, if you don't know what an entity is, it's like, a, you know, pretty much your player, your enemy, and uh, you can think of it as a moving or sort of living object. And uh, we're going to actually create another package for, you know, our second uh, superclass we're going to be creating today. And uh, we're going to call this package tile. And, uh, you know, we're going to create another class in this tile package. We're going to call it tile. And, uh, of course, the tile is pretty much like uh, the blocks of the game. Like, you know, sort of like the objects that make up the level so yeah uh, of course entity and tile are going to be super classes because uh all the objects we are going to make uh throughout this tutorial will either be an entity or a tile so yeah we're gonna go into our entity uh super class first and uh you know, uh, as I discussed in previous episodes, uh, superclasses, they have variables that uh, other classes, uh, subclasses of this superclass uh, will have. So, uh, because, uh, you know, every entity has to have a position on the screen, an X and Y coordinate, we're actually going to create uh, two public integers. The first will be called X, and the second will be called y. Now uh, every entity has to have a width and a height so like we know how big it is. So we're going to create another public integer, we're going to call it width and height. In our like uh, main package, just com.ogn.jetpack, I'm going to right click and I'm going to create a new enum. Now what an enum is is that um, it's a bit hard to explain at the moment but uh well uh, i'm going to give you an example here we're going to create our enum id like call yours id as well and uh, in our id enum uh by the way enum uh, is short for enumerator i'm pretty sure and what id will have is that uh the types of like objects that uh, our game is going to contain so let's say player you know coin jetpack and we're pretty much uh, making this is because uh you know let's say if we create a player object we need to give that player object the id of player so when we're implementing things like collision detection or like uh, we're checking through a list of entities we know that that entity will be a player because like uh you know if we don't give our uh, like entities or tiles an id then uh you know let's say we wanted to do the collision detection for a coin but uh you know, 
uh, it's stuffed up and uh, selected a jetpack instead, then we will be doing like this collision detection for a jetpack. So yeah, it's pretty much uh, checking uh, which entity and tile uh, we want to use, uh, you know, when we need to use it. And this will come uh, very handy in the future, so, you know, our game won't have, like, millions of bugs. Sorry if you can hear a bit of background noise, by the way. My house is a little loud at the moment. But, uh, yeah, uh, we're just going to, uh, you know, clear this uh, ID enum at the moment. And so uh, we're going to go back into our entity class. And in our entity class, we're going to create a public ID object, and we're going to call it ID. And we need to import ID because it's in a different package. And now we're going to create a constructor. And so our constructor is going to contain uh, all of these variables that we have just created. Oh, and I just remembered one more class we have to create uh, in our main package. We're going to call it handler. And uh, this will pretty much, like, as you guessed it, uh, handle things. Uh, it's going to render, like, uh, all the tiles and entities in our game. And, uh, you know, in the future, well, in the very near future, because we'll probably do this next episode, uh, our handler will actually, like, uh, have a list of all the uh, entities and uh, tiles that will exist in our game. And uh, it will render and update every one of them. So, see, our handler pretty much handles that. So, uh, we're actually going to create a public handler object. We're going to call it handler in our entity uh, superclass as well. On um, And, yeah, uh, when you're importing, uh, you know, classes, sometimes uh, there will be different classes of the same name because uh, you can see here there's actually three handlers. And uh, we need to select the right handler so Java knows which handler to import. Now just let me adjust my microphone a bit. And uh, we want to select the handler class we just created. So select com.ogn.jetpack.handler. Because if you don't, our uh, Java, well our Java game, will realize this handler as a different type of handler. I'm just going to show you a quick shortcut. So what you can do is that you can right click and go to refractor, no source I mean, and then click generate constructor using fields. Then what it will do is that it will create a constructor for us uh, and uh, we can select what parameters we want to use in that constructor. So make sure all the parameters or variables we have just created are selected, then click OK. And uh, there you go, as you can see like uh, Java has just created a quick constructor for us. Okay, so uh, we can delete this super thing, it's uh, really unnecessary. And uh, uh, what this is pretty much doing is that we're setting our like uh, variables here equal to an actual value. Uh, in here, we created variables, but we didn't set them to a value. In our constructor, we're setting them to a value. How that works is that, uh, let's say, I'm just going to quickly create an entity object here. You know, uh, our entity object, uh, you know, our entity objects like x and y coordinates and other variables uh, won't actually have a value. So uh, by specifying, like, let's say, we want to make our entity's x position uh, 20. Uh, by typing this in the first parameter, it's going to set that 20 equal to this int x in our uh, entity's constructor. And what it does is that uh, it says this, this dot x, which means uh, the x we created in our entity class, equal to the x that exists in our entity constructor. So we're setting this x equal to this x pretty much. And uh, you know, this x equals 20. So we're pretty much setting this x equal to 20. And uh, we're going to do that for other parameters as well. So, you know, let's say uh, I want the y coordinate to be 50, the width to be 10, the height to be 70, the id to be id dots, just something, well, it doesn't really exist. And uh, the handler can be a new handler. You don't have to type this, but yeah, I'm just giving you an example. So this constructor only exists to give uh, the variables we just created an actual value because uh, if we try to use these variables 
and they don't have a value, they're just like non-existent, then uh, you know, our game will crash and we'll get like errors and stuff. So now we're gonna create getters and setters. Now uh, what getters and setters are, well getters and setters are do different things. A getter pretty much gets the value of a variable and a setter pretty much sets the value of a variable whenever we want to. So uh, there's a quick shortcut for creating getters and setters as well. So we can type, or we will, I mean, right click, then go to source and click generate getters and setters. Then select all the variables that you want to use. So we want to create a getter and setter for X, Y, uh, width and height. Uh, we don't actually want to create a getter and setter for ID and handler. We only want to create a getter and I'll show you how to do that in a second. So click OK. And there you go. As you can see, like, uh, you know, we've created our getters and setters. And I'll give you like a, an example with, and you can see there's a public integer method. It's called get x and it returns the value of x. So, you know, let's say we uh, set x equal to 20. If we, uh, you know, type int get x is equal to get x, then it will, then our get x variable will actually be the value of get x. So, and because get x returns 20, we're setting get x equal to 20. And you know, let's say uh, if our x coordinate changed, now it's 50, uh, then by setting, uh, you know, the integer get x equal to the method get x, you know, this is really confusing. I'm just going to change it to position. So yeah, if we are, uh, you know, set x equal to 50, then, uh, you know, uh, if we set position equal to get x, then, uh, you know, get x will return 50. And then uh, we'll be setting our position integer pretty much equal to 50. And uh, set x, let's say you want to set like x is, well, you know, we can really just type set x if we ever want to just change our x and uh, we can we have to actually uh, specify a parameter as you can see here so let's say we want to set our x equal to 100 and uh, this sets this dot x which is this x equal to the x the uh, parameter in this method so yeah by typing this we're pretty much setting x equal to 100 and that's uh, pretty much for like y, width, and height. Now, uh, as I said before, we only want to create getters for ID and handler because uh, we don't actually want to create like a setter for handler and ID. So to do that, just uh, go to source again, generate getters and setters, then just click select getters. And uh, what this will do is that uh, you'll only create a getters for the uh, specific uh, variables. So click OK. And there you go. Now, I'm pretty sure I've explained to you guys uh, what an abstract method is. And uh, in case I haven't, then an abstract method is uh, pretty much a method that, uh, you know, has to exist in every subclass that extends our entity superclass. So let's say we create an abstract method called, you know, get x. Then, uh, you know, whenever uh, a subclass of entity is created and then, uh, you know, the get x method will, like, have to be existing inside of our uh, subclass. Otherwise, we'll get an error. So, yeah, we're going to create uh, two abstract methods. The first will be called public abstract void, and we're going to call it render. And uh, this will be, like, uh, the render method for uh, every entity. And uh, we're just going to type uh, graphics g because uh, we want to like uh, have a graphics G parameter for our entities and tiles uh, render method. And then the strange thing is, we don't actually give uh, our abstract methods a body. No, we actually put a semicolon on the end. Because uh, by creating this line of code, then uh, what pretty much happens is that, uh, you know, we're telling our entity superclass to have an abstract method called render. There's no need to actually give it a body until uh, it goes into 
a subclass. So, and now we're going to do the same thing. Now, so create another abstract void method. And this one we're going to call tick, but we don't need to specify any parameters for tick. And we get an error because we need to make entity an abstract class. Uh, you know, if we have an abstract method inside of a class or a superclass, then that superclass has to be an abstract class. So to make our entity superclass an abstract class, after public, uh, we just type abstract. So uh, at the top, there's public abstract class entity and not just public class entity. And we need to import graphics because it's in a different package. And yeah, that's pretty much our entity class. Now we're going to copy all this code. So you just click anywhere, then do uh, control A, then control C, or command A, command C if you're on a Mac like me. And uh, go into our tile class and just paste it. And do, you know, we have to change a few things. We have to like change the package, like to go to com.ogn dot jetpack dot tile uh, we have to change a public abstract class entity to public abstract class tile we need to change our constructor from public entity to public tile and we're actually going to create another variable in our tile method that our entity uh, superclass won't so uh, it's going to be a public boolean method and we're gonna call it solid and uh, we're actually going to add this to our constructor. So after, you know, not after handler, handler. I will do it after integer height. So after int height, we want to type boolean solid, then put a comma. And, uh, you know, in our constructor, we set this dot solid equal to solid. So it's setting whatever we set to solid in our constructor to, you know, our tiles solid boolean. And uh, now we're going to create a, a getter and setter for it, actually. Uh, we only need to create a getter for a solid, so we'll just do that right now. We'll just do it the old-fashioned way by typing public uh, boolean uh, is solid. And, uh, you know, it's going to return... Uh, my typing's terrible. Return uh, solid. So, yeah, that's pretty much it. I'm going to wrap up this episode here. If you enjoyed, feel free to leave a like, a comment, and subscribe. You know, uh, leave me a question for my Q&A in the comments below. And, uh, yeah, if someone is interested in learning how to program games in Java or is interested in game devlogs, uh, please let them know about this channel. I would highly appreciate it. And uh, if you have a Twitter account, please feel free to follow me on Twitter. So I'll see you guys soon. Bye.